Let's take a look at a practice problem. So AF is a 45 year old white female who was admitted to Loma Linda University Medical Center General Ward with a Streptococcus verdans endocarditis and she has native heart valves. She's allergic to penicillins and cephalosporins. Her current serum creatinine is 2.5 2.4 uh, milligram per deciliter and it is stable. The medical team would like to start vancomycin and ask you to, uh, for a vancomycin recommendation based on the 2015 American Heart Association guidelines for infective endocarditis in adults. So let's take a look at a few important information here. So first of all, this is a, uh, you know, 45, uh, uh, the age is 45 years. Uh, it is a female. The height is 5'2", weight is 140 kilogram, and uh, the infection is uh, streptococcus viridan endocarditis. Uh, we need uh, serum creatinine 2.4, which is stable, and uh, they are asking for uh, specific guideline recommendations, so 2015 American Heart Association. Now, before we get to vancomycin dosing, let's do the basics uh, first. So uh, essentially, uh, this patient's ideal body weight uh, would be 45.5 because it's a female plus uh, 2.3 times uh, 2 inches over 5 uh, feet tall, which would give you uh, 50 kilogram. So that's the ideal body weight. Next, we look at uh, total body weight. In this case, it's easy because it's not in pounds, so we don't have to convert. So it's already given to us 140 uh, kilogram. Now that's significantly higher than the ideal body weight. Uh, so let's, uh, you know, if you calculate the BMI, the BMI would actually get uh, 56.4. Uh, um, so, you know, she is definitely obese. And, uh, you know, uh, you, you don't necessarily have to calculate BMI, but, uh, you know, if you get the ratio of total body weight to ideal body weight is definitely more than 30%. So we are going to, so this is uh, more than 30%. Uh, of ideal body weight. So we are going to uh, calculate adjusted body weight which is essentially uh, the ideal body weight plus 40% of the difference between ideal body weight and total body weight. So total body weight is 140 kilos minus uh, 50, which would give you 86 uh, kilogram as adjusted body weight. And of course, for vancomycin, we always use total body weight when it comes to dosing. And the reason we're calculating adjusted body weight is literally for the purpose of calculating creatinine clearance. So just to assess the uh, kidney function, we would calculate creatinine clearance using adjusted body weight. So it's 140 uh, minus uh, the age, which is 45 years. Uh, times the adjusted uh, body weight, which is 86 kilos. And that's divided by 72 times uh, serum creatinine, which is 2.4. And because uh, this is a female, we multiply by the female factor, 0.85, which would give you 39 uh, 0 0.7 uh, ml uh, per minute. And you, know, you can you can actually round this to 40 ml per minute. Okay, so we got the basics down. Uh, next, we need to know uh, you know how to actually dose uh, vancomycin based on 2015 American Heart Association guidelines. So if you go to PubMed and uh, essentially just type uh, the first author, so the author's last name is given to you here, uh, Badur, and then the journal name circulation and the year of publication, that's a good starting point. So if you just uh, search here, 
uh, you will see that uh, there are three top results. I mean, of course, there are more results than there, but uh, you will see that uh, the third entry is the author's name and the journal name, and this is uh, the guideline that you're looking for. So if you click this, it will take you to the page for the guideline, and then you can click on the journal's link to go to the journal. So if you click this, it will take you to circulation, which is uh, American Heart Association's journal, and they do publish American Heart Association guidelines in this journal. The latest uh, endocarditis guideline was published in 2015. It has not been updated since then as of this recording. So here, if you want, you can download the PDF. It should be free access, so you should be able to get that uh, even if you don't have access to the library. Uh, now, for the, the way these guidelines are organized is based on uh, you know, the nature of the valve as well as the organism. So first we are going to look for the organism and this is a very done strip so uh, you know if you kind of navigate this guideline you will find out that the VGS stands for uh, very done group streptococci so we're going to go to this section so if you go scroll down there's a whole section for this and if you go down now the next thing is for each organism group they either either have recommendations for native heart valve versus uh, you know, prosthetic valve. This patient has native valve, so this is actually the correct section. Uh, so you will see they have nicely, um, you know, they have placed the recommendation nicely in the table. Uh, for this, you know, we don't have to essentially figure out what the treatment is because the team has already committed to vancomycin. We're just trying to find the dose. So if you go down to vancomycin, you will see that um, the guideline recommends 30 milligram per kilo per 24 hours divided equally into two. So essentially that would translate into 15 milligram per kilo every 12 hours. Of course, that's for someone with normal renal function. So now we're gonna see what to do for this patient. And then they also tell you that vancomycin therapy is reasonable only for patients unable to tolerate penicillin or ceftriaxone, uh, which sounds like this patient who has allergies to penicillins and cephalosporins. And vancomycin dose should be adjusted to a trough uh, a range of 10 to 15. Okay, so now let's see uh, what we can do for this patient. So, uh, you know, so we essentially found out, uh, let me switch to a pen. Uh, so essentially 30 milligram uh, per kilogram uh, per 24 hours uh, divided in two, right? So divided in two, uh, okay, so essentially that would mean uh, 15 milligram per kilogram uh, Q12 hours, right? Now, that's normal renal function. This patient's renal function is creatinine crans, uh uh, you know, so, but creatinine, creatinine clearance uh, equals 40. So if you uh, remember from uh, this, the lecture, uh, if creatinine uh, clearance is 15 to 49, or you can use, a, you know, something like lexicom for renal adjustment, so for current currents between 15 to 49, we essentially use Q24 hours. Okay, so instead of 15 milligram per kilo every 12 hours, we are going to dose adjust to 15 milligram per kilo every 24 hours for this patient. Now, um, remember you have to use total body weight when calculating dose for vancomycin. So this is 15 milligram uh, per kilogram. Uh, times total body weight, which for this patient is 140 kilos, which would uh, give you uh, 2,100 milligram. Uh, for vancomycin, we round every 250 milligram. So, uh, it, you know, we can round this down a little bit to 2,000 uh, milligram. We are rounding down instead of up because, I mean, this patient is um, obese and we know that 
when you go over two grams of uh, a single dose, you increase the risk of nephrotoxicity. So for that reason, I'm going to round down to 2000 milligram or two grams. Uh, let's see. So the final recommendation for this patient would be uh, so vancomycin, uh, two grams IV uh, every 24 hours, and this will be infused over at least two hours because it's two grams, uh, starting uh, immediately. So that's it for um, problem number one. Let's go to problem number two. So problem number two is um, uh, D, uh, DG is a 66 year old female with an MRSA sternal osteomyelitis secondary to coronary artery bypass graft or cabbage surgery. Her current serum creatinine is 1.4 and it is stable. The medical team asks you to recommend a PKPD optimized vancomycin regimen using population from Coquinetics. Now this hospital targets a serum vancomycin trough of 10 to 15 for non-severe infection and a trough of 15 to 20 for severe infection. So again, the important information is uh, the age. Um, this is a female, height, uh, weight, uh, this is a MRSA osteomyelitis, so this is a severe infection. So we want to go for 15 to 20 per, uh, you know, this hospital's protocol. I'm not saying that 15 to 20 is the right uh, target for this infection, but you know, if the hospital has a protocol for you know this type of goal for trough, then you know that's what we are doing for this problem. So again, let's do the basics first. For this patient, uh, the weight is given in pounds, so we need to convert it to kilograms. So uh, total uh, body weight is 143 pounds divided by 2.2, which will give you 65 kilos. So 65 kilogram, that's total body weight. And then for ideal body weight, again, this is a female. So 45.5 uh, plus 2.3 times this is five inches over five feet tall, uh, which would give you 57 uh, kilogram. Okay, now if you get the ratio of these two, so uh, you know, essential total body weight is 65 divided by 57 uh, would give you 1.14. So that means this uh, total body weight is only 14% uh, above ideal body weight. So there is no need to calculate adjusted body weight. Okay, and for the purposes of renal assessment, we're going to use the ideal body weight. Okay, but for vancomycin uh, calculations, including dosing or, you know, other things directly related to vancomycin, we will use total body weight. But for using uh, um, cockroft gold to calculate creatinine clearance, we're going to use ideal body weight. So again, this is 140 minus H, which is, is a 66 year old uh, female. Uh, times uh, the body weight is 57 and divided by 72 times the serum creatinine which is uh, 1.4 and again this is a female so multiply by female factor 0 0.85 and this would give you 36 uh, milliliters per minute okay and uh, now let's do calculations for vancomycin specifically we're going to use population kinetics because specifically this question is asking us for uh, PKPD uh, optimized vancomycin dosing so a good starting point is to get vancomycin clearance which is essentially one way to do it is uh, you know 0.8 times uh, creatinine clearance so this is times 36, and because 36 is milliliters per minute, we multiply by 0 0.06 to convert it to liters uh, per hour, and this will give you 1.7 uh, liters per hour. That's vancomycin clearance. And next, we can do 
uh, let's see, we can do volume of distribution for vancomycin. Now, uh, nothing in this problem indicated that the patient is either dehydrated or um, has fluid retention. So we're going to use the average of 0.7 uh, times total body weight. So this is, again, total body weight. Make sure you use the correct weight. Uh, so this is 0.7 times uh, 65 would give you uh, 46 liters. So this is volume of distribution. And then next we can do um, the elimination constant. So there are different ways to calculate um, elimination constant. One way is to actually use uh, clearance and volume of distribution. So here's clearance divided by volume of distribution. Uh, so we calculated uh, clearance to be 1.7. divided by volume of distribution, which was uh, 46. And this would give you uh, 0 0.037 inverse hours. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way is to use the Motsky equation. So that would uh, essentially give you the equation uh, 0 0.000 eight three times creatine clearance which is 36 milliliters per minute plus 0 0.0044 and this will give you a k of 0 0.034 so it's pretty close now, a small deviation in K can uh, be a little more when you convert it to half-life. Uh, so let's see, if you calculate the half-life based on this, so essentially ln of 2 divided by K. So this will give you uh, 20, about 20.4 20 hours. Uh, using the original K we found, if you calculate uh, half-life, this will give you essentially 18.7 18 hours. So, uh, you know, a couple hours uh, difference, uh, but not something that would be significantly different. Uh, you know, ultimately, regardless of which K you calculate, you should end up with the final answer that's pretty close, and I will, I will show you the difference. But let's go with the original K that we... Uh, calculated it doesn't it doesn't matter which one you choose because both of these are estimation okay so at the end of the day probably neither of them uh, are the true k because we are using the population kinetics so these are estimates from population uh, you, you know the true k in this patient will not be known until we actually get levels from uh, the patient and we calculate the k okay uh, right now we are just guessing so let's continue guessing using population kinetics. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to use, uh, we're going to calculate tau. So in this case, because this is severe infection and the hospital wanted us to target a 15 to 20 uh, trough, I'm going to pick a, uh, you know, a gold peak of 40. You know, again, it doesn't matter what you choose as uh, the peak. Um, you know, it just needs to be something reasonable. So our math, um, you know, checks out. Uh, but for the trough goal, I'm going to pick something between 15 and 20. So I'm just going to choose 17 for this case. Uh, and then divided by K. So I'm using the blue K here, 0 0.037. And that will give you a tau of about 23 hours. Uh, which I'm going to round to uh, 24 hours. So we're going to use 24 hour dosing for this patient. Uh, you know, you want to use something that's clinically reasonable. Uh, next, we're going to calculate the dose based on this. So the dose would be uh, essentially your K times um, volume of distribution, which is 46 times uh, the gold peak, which is uh, 40, times uh, one minus E to the negative K times uh, the tau, which is 24 hours in this case. 
And then in the denominator, we have 1 minus e to the negative k, and time of infusion, we'll just assume 1 for now. And this will give you a dose of about 1103 milligram. Uh, so you can either uh, round this um, up or down, right? So because this is not unusually high, so I don't have concern for nephrotoxicity. So you can either do 1000 milligram or perhaps uh, 1250. Okay, so we're going to test and see which one would be uh, the correct or, or more likely to give us the, uh, the results we want. Okay, so I'm going to test uh, 1,000 milligram every 24 hours. And this is nice because it's 1,000 milligram. We infuse it over one hour, so it will make the math easier. So I'm going to start with this. And if it doesn't work out, then I can go and test 1,250 milligram. Because if you do the 1,250 milligram first, your uh, time of infusion would have to be 1.5 hours. That's going to make the math more complicated. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to start with this one first and hopefully it will work out. So if you do, I want to see what would be the predicted peak using this um, regimen. So it would be 1000 milligram divided by time of infusion, which is one. That's nice. Times one minus E to the negative K times time of infusion, which again is one. And then in the denominator, we will have um, the volume of distribution which is 46 times uh, our k again i'm using the blue k and uh, times uh, 1 minus e to the negative k times uh, tau which is 20 24 hours and this will give us a predicted peak of 36 Point three. Now we don't have a target peak, uh, you know, because uh, we are for efficacy and safety. We are really targeting the trough for vancomycin, so it doesn't really matter if we got forty or fifty or thirty for the peak. We just want to make sure that we get the right um, uh, trough. So predicted trough would be uh, your peak, your predicted peak times. Uh, e to the negative k times your tau minus time of infusion so 24 minus 1 and when you plug this in it will give you a trough of 15.5 and we wanted the trough to be 15 to 20 so this is good right so we can go ahead and recommend uh, but actually, before we recommend, we also want to make sure that uh, while well, this gives you the right uh, trough, you want to make sure that you're getting the right AUC as well. So when calculating AUC, use the trapezoidal rule uh, equation. So this is essentially, uh, you, you say your peak, um, your peak, which uh, predicted peak, uh, which is uh, 36.3. Uh, plus predicted trough, which is 15.5. That's divided by 2. And this whole thing will multiply it by time of infusion, which is 1 in this case. And that's plus. Now the difference between peak and trough, which is so 36.3 minus 15.5. And this is divided by your K. And then you multiply it by, uh, you know, essentially 24 minus your tau. In this case, tau is 24, so you only get one, uh, you know, one uh, peak. Uh, so th that makes the math a little easier. So this will give you uh, 588 as predicted uh, AUC. Uh, I, I, I didn't put... Uh, units here but make sure you also include your units in your answers uh, but essentially you want the peak and trough uh, you know uh, I'm sorry the AUC to be somewhere between 400 to 600 okay now if it goes less than 400 it's less likely to be effective um, now if it goes above 600 it's gonna get 
toxic once you approach 700 so if you're a little ab above 600 these are predictions so it doesn't necessarily mean that it will be like 650 if you calculate it uh, but you know as long as it's under 700 uh, you should be fine and so since the AUC and trough uh, are what we want, you can go ahead and recommend uh, vanco, uh, vancomycin, 1,000 uh, milligram IV infused uh, over one hour, uh, starting now. Now, what would have happened if you had carried on with the other uh, method of calculating K? Uh, so let's see what would happen. So if we had gone with Matsuki equation, you would have had a slightly different K. So here's uh, the green K, 0 0.034 instead of 0 0.037. So essentially, if you go this route, I'm going to use green ink just to show you. Um, if you were to calculate the dose, so with this K, you will get, uh, you know, so everything will be the same. You just use a different K. So uh, the dose here uh, would be about uh, 1044 milligram. Okay. So that's different than 1103. But then again, we round every 250 milligrams. So again, your options are here either 1000 milligram or uh 1250 milligram and uh, for your tau if you were to use uh, calculate tau using the green uh, K uh, you would uh, end up with instead of 23 hours you would end up with 25 hours okay which again we round to something that's clinically reasonable so we're gonna use Q24 hours anyway so you see, regardless of which K you use, we will come up with the same, um, you know, po possible answers. But then uh, when you calculate predicted peak and trough, you will also have some differences. So if you were to test 1000 milligram every 24 hours using the green peak, you essentially would end up with a predicted peak of uh, 38.3 uh, and if you do the predicted trough you would end up with 17.5 which is still uh, within the goal of 15 to 20 so essentially the answer wouldn't have changed much um, regardless of which k you would have used now if you had uh, tested uh, you know the other possible uh, dose so tw let's say you want to do 1250 milligram every 24 hours over um, 1.5 hours okay now let's do it with the or original blue K so if you were to do this uh, your predicted uh, peak uh, would essentially be uh, something around 44.9 and your predicted uh, trough would have been 19.5 which is again within your target of 15 to 20 but these are estimates and this is kind of like borderline okay so this is where uh, depending on which k you use it will likely make a difference so if you do the same thing with uh, the green k your predicted peak would be essentially 47.5 and your predicted trough using the green K using Moskey equation would be 22.1 uh, which is toxic okay so for that reason I will you know I know one K is giving you a within range but the other K is giving you potentially toxic trough uh, and these are all estimates, so we don't know which one would actually end up happening in the patient. So for that reason, I will not be recommending this empirically. And I will go with, um, you know, 1000 milligram every 24 hours. Now, let's move on to the second part of this problem. So this is essentially uh, the medical team accepted your vancomycin recommendation from part one. Now, it's uh, two days later. 
and the patient is clinically uh, improving serum creatinine continues to be 1.4 and now we do have a single vancomycin level so just one level 30 minutes prior to the next dose and it happens to be uh, 22 now 30 minutes is pretty close to the to the trough so it's not really worth calculating what would it be 30 minutes it's fair to say that you know if the, on a 24 hour dosing interval if it has been you know 23.5 hours since the dose was given and the level is 22 uh, you know I don't think 30 more minutes is gonna go down below uh, 20 so it's fair to assume that this is a toxic trough now let's uh, uh, do some calculations because the medical team asks you to adjust the vancomycin dose uh, based on the vancomycin level so the first thing you want to do is update some of the numbers based on the level we got so what we cannot change is the volume of distribution and you know we only have a single level so we still have to use the population uh, pk uh, volume of distribution that we calculated in the previous part so volume of distribution would still be uh, 46 liters which we calculated uh, previously and uh, now what we can do is extrapolate from this 22 and see what our peak is so the peak and that's essentially because we recommended 1000 milligram uh, every 24 hours over one hour okay so we can estimate what the peak uh, would be in this patient because we use 1000 milligram and the volume of distribution we guessed or estimated that it would be 46 from pop pk and then plus the trough which is uh, you know approximately 22 and that will give you an estimated peak of 43.7 um, so that the units would be milligram per liter okay and then uh, we can calculate a new k so pr in the previous part our k was completely from population kinetics now this is like semi population kinetics because this 46 is still coming from pk but this 22 is coming from the patient so this is an improved we're going to have an improved k because we're going to use this to calculate a new k okay so this is essentially ln of uh, peak which is 43.7 divided by the trough which is 22 and the time between two levels right so if our tau was uh, 24 hours so overall 24 hours it was infused over one hour so our peak is one hour later so we're going to subtract one and this 22 is also 30 minutes before the next dose so we are going to subtract another 0.5 here so the uh, time between these two levels is essentially uh, 22.5 okay and that will give you a new k of 0.031 um, inverse hours and of course anytime you have a k calculate a half-life uh, which will give you uh, th this is 22 hours okay uh, the half-life helps you uh, kind of estimate when the steady state will be achieved so when you want to order your levels uh, you know you will use the half-life so since we have a new k now um, which is uh, 0 0.031 we are going to calculate another regimen so new tau again uh, we're gonna do ln of our goal peak and trough so that hasn't changed it's a severe infection so 40 over 17 again 17 I just chose something between 15 to 20 uh, it's a good idea to go in the middle so you don't you know because these are estimates so if you go for 15 uh, you might end up for uh, you know un uh, under 15 or if you go for 20 you might end up over 20 but if you choose 17 and if you go under or over you might still be within range and that's divided by the new k okay so use this new k and that will give you um, a new tau of 27 27.6 okay now you can do two things here 
you can either you know use the q24 hours that we had before or you might say that well 24 hours was not enough for the body to clear vancomycin so we ended up with a toxic trough of 22 so maybe when the body needs more time so when we will round up to the next clinically reasonable um, you know uh, frequency would be every 36 hours okay so we're not going to choose random time uh, so you know the standard is like every six hours every eight hours every 12 hours every 24 hours every 36 hours every 48 hours and so on so so we have two options here but now let's uh, calculate a new dose so new dose Uh, again, the same equation as before, but the new K, okay? So K times uh, volume of distribution is still 46 times the peak that we want times 1 minus E. I'm going to go with the 24 hours first because, uh, you know, maybe we need a smaller dose that goes with it and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, then I'm going to try every 36 hours. So 1 minus E to the negative K times 24 and then in the denominator you will have uh, 1 minus e to the negative k uh, times time of infusion is 1 and this will give you a new dose of 980 milligram uh, which you can round to 1000 milligram right uh, but this is where you would stop because 1,000 milligram every 24 hours is is exactly what this patient had and it resulted in toxic trough. So you do not want to use 1,000 milligram. Uh, now another option would be to use uh, 750 milligram and see if that works. Um, you know, this would be every 24 hours. Uh, but I'm also going to explore every, uh, every 36 hours. So let's see what would it be if we do um, tau of 36. So the new dose, again, uh, K times 46 times 40, uh, 1 minus E to the negative K times 36. And denominator would be the same, 1 minus E to the negative K times one and this will give you uh, 1256 uh, which we can round to 1250 okay so even though the dose is higher than what we had given the patient but the interval is longer so the body has more time to clear it so we can we can test this to see what happens. Now, one thing I forgot to calculate uh, when we got our new peak uh, is to see, based on the previous regimen, uh, what was the AUC, right? So if we calculate what AUC the patient had achieved, uh, you know, so uh, the peak is 43.7. The trough, which is 22 divided by 2, and this is times the time of infusion, which is 1. And then you say plus the difference between peak and trough, 43.7 minus 22, and that's divided by k, uh, which uh, is the new k, 0 0.031. Uh, and all of this you multiply by uh, 24 divided by tau, which was 24 here. And this will give you a, an AUC of 732. So this is also toxic. Okay, so it matches. We had a trough, that's 22. Everything is toxic, it's supra therapeutic. And we have an AUC that agrees. Uh, that the dose 1000 milligram every 24 hours is toxic. Now let's continue, uh, go back and test 
the 1250 milligram every 36 hours. So test 1250 milligram every 36 hours, and this will be over um, 1.5 hours. Okay, so we're going to, to test this to see what we get for our predicted peak and trough. So predicted peak would be, uh, so you know, 1250 divided by 1.5. And this is times one minus e to the negative k times 1.5. And in the denominator, we'll have uh, 46 uh, times k times one minus e to the negative k times tau is 36. And that will give us a predicted peak of 39.5 and predicted trough is predicted peak 39.5 times e to the negative k times your tau which is 36 minus time of infusion which is 1.5 and that will give us 13.6 uh, so this is this does, did not work because we wanted it to be 15 to 20. So that didn't work. Okay, so we cannot recommend 1250 every 36 hours. So what we can do is that I can say, okay, so if this dose didn't work, what I can do is to um, essentially try a higher dose. So let's, uh, I'm going to do it over here. Uh, so let's test instead 1500 milligram because we run every 250. So 1500 milligram every 36 hours, still over uh, 1.5 hours, okay? So we're gonna test this uh, predicted peak. When you do this uh, would be um, essentially 47.4. And predicted trough would be 16.3 uh, now this is what we wanted because we wanted it to be 15 to 20 okay uh, now before we actually recommend this let's also test uh, what the AUC would be so AUC pred predicted AUC would be uh, so with we're gonna use these two numbers okay So this is 47.4 plus 16.3. This is divided by two. And this is times uh, time of infusion, which is 1.5. And then we add the difference of peak and trough, 47.4 minus 16.3 divided by k and then times this part is important because it's 24 divided by tau if we're using tau of 36 we're actually reducing the AUC for one day okay so for a 24 hour period and this will give you exactly 700 Okay, now this is borderline and these are estimates. So there's a good chance that this will actually be lower. Um, you know, so as long as it's not over 700, I'm not too concerned given that this is a big estimate. Uh, so this is what I would recommend the 1500 milligram um, every 36 hours. Okay, now you could, ex I didn't explore what the 750 every 24 hours would do. You can explore and see if that gives you a better answer. If so, then that would be a better recommendation. But I'm happy with the numbers right now. So 1500 milligram every 36 hours over 1.5 hours is what I recommend. But we're not done because we need to figure out when to give the next dose because the trough that we had is toxic. So we don't want to just give the next dose right now while the patient's vancomycin levels are in toxic levels. 
So you do want to calculate um, when to do that. So when to give uh, next dose. So you can use the equation, uh, you know, C2 equals C1 times E to the negative KT. Okay, so there are different ways to do this. For example, let's say, you know, right now the initial concentration is 22. That's the trough. And you want to see how long it would, given that we know the K, we're interested in T, how long would it take for the level to go from 22 to, uh, you know, you can, you can, you know, definitely want it to go to less than 20. Um, you know, just to be safe, I'm going to say, uh, you know, I'm going to use 17, for example, um, because 17 is between 15 to 20, right? So you don't want it to go less than 15 for this patient, and you don't want it to be more than 20 because it's toxic. So I'm just going to put, these are estimates, so I'm just going to go for 17 and see how long it would take. And when you rearrange this, essentially, uh, you would say T equals... Uh, negative ln of uh, 17 over 22 divided by your k, uh, which will give you uh, 8 hours. Okay, so that's the key here. It will take 8 hours for the trough to go from 22 to 17. Now, if you wanted to, you could do, uh, you know, if you go for 20 instead of 17, uh, you would. Uh, end up with T of three hours. Okay, uh, it, it doesn't matter because these are all estimates. As long as you don't just give the dose now and you wait a few hours to give it, so it has to be at minimum three hours. You also don't want to wait too long, right? So if you, for example, if you had put 15 instead of 20, you would calculate a T of 12 hours. Okay, so if you wait 12 hours to give the dose, this is an estimate, so it might actually be lower than 15. So now you have gone too long uh, with subtherapeutic uh, levels. Uh, so what I would recommend is uh, vancomycin. Uh, we calculated uh, 1500 milligram IV um, over 1.5 hours. Uh, gave um, eight hours uh, give in eight hours from now you know so that way they don't give it at the time the next dose was due they're just gonna have to wait eight hours and you know I didn't give you exact time if you know in in a real in the real world situation you would actually have an actual number for the hour, so for example, you might say, uh, you know, it's it's noon when you're calculating this, so then in eight hours it will be eight p.m. So you can actually order the the next dose to be given at eight p.m. or something like that. All right, this concludes this practice problem.